Where is the urgency in Auburn football's recruiting? You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Happy Charlie Tuesday to all who celebrate. We're joined by Auburn message board legend and the host of the Top Button Podcast, the Charlie five. We'll talk a little Auburn basketball coming up their path in the SEC tournament. I think it's pretty favorable. I'll get your thoughts on that in a second, Charlie five, but we've been talking offline a ton about, okay, what's going on with Auburn football recruiting. And we're coming out of a dead period. Like this is you know notoriously a slow time of the year, but visits are going to start to pick up. You're seeing action other places. Any level of concern, like, does it feel like there's a lack of urgency to you on the Auburn recruiting front right now? Yeah, I mean, it's hard not to. It's hard not to feel that way. Um, look, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no like um, surprise, or it's not like out of the realm of possibility that hey, we're going to be watching across the state uh, when you feel like when you, you know, Lord Saban retires and and you feel like you have a chance to sort of take a step. And then you get a commit flip to Alabama, yeah. and then they land another top in-state prospect. You're going to start saying, "Okay, you know what's going on here? What's going on yeah. here?" And uh, I totally get it. I totally get it. Some of the things I feel like you wish you could see behind the scenes and understand what the plan is. We're about to have an incredible run here on visits. You're talking four to five uh, top players of their position that are going to be here over the next two or three weeks. One actually being here today, a five-star offensive tackle. So, mm. but, it's, but at the same time, you're like, all right, we need to start reeling off some commits. We've had rumors of like having some silence and things like that. You know, Alabama's popped off two big time commits, two top 100, I believe uh, recruits um, with Derek Smith and then flipping Antonio Coleman, like, let's go. We got guys. Let's let's pull the trigger. So I can see how you can be kind of antsy right now. Yeah, and you mentioned Smith. I mean, he was incredibly important. One of the top players in the state. And so you know, yeah. that, that's a guy that Auburn wanted. And it almost would have meant more Alabama not getting him. And obviously, we've got you know what, 10 months until they, they'll sign. And certainly, Auburn is not going to back off. That's probably the best thing about this, this staff and what Hugh Freeze has done is their ability to flip guys. But I think that's worth following uh for sure so it's you, not easy to flip guys i know we made a habit of it um i wouldn't say any of these recruitments are over uh yeah. like Derek smith's high on the board so they're going to keep after him hey it's kind of hard to sell a wide receiver now after you you know this is a problem you're going to have to work through like that we're, we're not this is unfamiliar territory you got to sell a wide receiver when you just brought in the greatest wide receiver class that may have ever been brought in mm -hmm. uh so i get it I get it. And then Alabama, I think, loses a lot this year, uh, and they'll be all young moving forward. So I get it. But at the same time, uh, I wouldn't say – I wouldn't put any recruitment past Q Freeze. They've shown the ability to flip. But, hey, flips aren't easy. So mm -hmm. go ahead. I, I'd like to – you know, selfishly, I'd love to see our strategy go, hey, let's go ahead and get some on the board. Let's go ahead – you know, your Traverse dice uh, – yeah. Position of need, offensive tackle from you know Langston Hughes. Let's go ahead and push him. Let's get him on the board. Anquan Fagans, a, a big in-state player. Hey, you want to send a shot back? A big in-state player. That's another guy you feel like you you got a good shot at. Let's go ahead. I'd like to see, and I think you're going to see it. Maybe this weekend is a huge weekend of visits. Maybe you'll start seeing the ball rolling, and that may have been the plan all along. We don't necessarily yeah, right. Auburn may not necessarily be in the position where they have to have such a sense of urgency. Whereas Alabama, hey, we hired a coach that's not from here. We got to create some buzz. Let's go ahead. We're, we're, we're going to have to spend an NIL like we haven't been able to – haven't had to spend before with that that saving effect where, you know, the values aren't the same. You know what I mean? Like you don't – they don't necessarily have to go out and, and buy guys because they can sell NFL production and Nick Saban, whatever. So maybe that's maybe that's what you're seeing. Alabama trying to get out there and make a splash. And Auburn's like, hey, we don't really have to necessarily change what we're doing. Uh, I just, you know, from a fan perspective, you'd love to start seeing some seeing that board start filling up. 
instead of yes. going the other way. <laughs> right. I mean, it's been a few guys now where Auburn was in it and, and they go to the other school in the state. It just stinks, especially when going into this. And, and I think you nailed it. I think winning these are more important right now for Alabama than Auburn because they're for being sure. recruited like crazy right Absolutely. now because their biggest advantage, you know, uh, sailed off into the sunset and, and and obviously with Nick Saban retiring. So I'm with you on that. I 100% agree, but there's another side of the coin there, right? Where it's okay. Now's the time, like the yeah. window for Auburn to kind of step on the throat of Alabama and say, Hey, we're taking the state now kind of feels like we let that slip a little bit. That's why I was so upset about the Ryan Williams news. Yeah. Um, because it kind of felt like that would have been really symbolic if Auburn could have pulled that off and, some people said I was too harsh on that, which maybe you're right. I don't know, but I don't think you. I don't think you're far out there. I, 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 yeah. I mean, I know that. I know that some of the talks of you know the the money spent that Alabama you know had to you know from an NIL perspective, the package they put together was just astronomical, and uh, they that was one they had to. They could they had not to. Miss. The they pressure was more on miss. them at that point than, than Auburn. So once again, but, it lines up to what you're saying, but still, it just kind of feels still, like yeah. oh, we're right, so close. Man, if you if you get that one and you don't lose Coleman, and then you land Derek Smith, I, my thing was you, you were going into this season with this recruiting cycle with a good chance to land eight out of the top ten, and now it's like okay, now really only maybe five or six are, are you, you feel incredibly, you know, you feel really good about. So, um, you know, with Alvin Henderson out there visiting mm -hmm. Florida state and, and you don't really have a good pulse on him, then you just want to, you just want to start seeing some, some chips falling, I guess. So you feel better about this whole, whole situation because in the, in the year of 2024, you're negative one recruit right now. You've lost two and I believe you've only added one. Uh, this year so far so like you know you got to start you 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 feeling nervous you want to start seeing some balls rolling but you're going to see the visits pick up and the lists are incredible they uh, are of, of guys coming in this weekend and then uh throughout the next several weeks i'll say another thing the dead yeah. period opened up right during spring we our first week of spring break too so mm -hmm. that, that didn't help. that didn't help things either yeah and we'll see i, I mean i'm sure we'll see some uh, as as uh, we get a kind of a viewing window later today, I mean, odds are we'll kind of see Hugh Freeze and some of the staff talking to some guys kind of on the sidelines there too that have their, you know, their lanyards on, you know, uh, being recruits that are visiting. So we'll see. We'll certainly see what that looks like. But from the outside looking in, it does feel like the urgency has lacked a little bit. I'm sure internally they have a plan. And like you said, it could be happening this week with a nice list of visits coming in. And we'll talk more about recruiting uh, with Brian later in the week. Charlie Five, could Auburn basketball win the SEC tournament? We discuss in just a moment, right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Charlie Five, can you imagine driving anything, let a, even a bike, that's not made by Nissan? I don't even like to look at look at other vehicles. I'm it's offensive sometimes. Honest. Yeah, it's like if that's yeah. not a, like, why are you driving something that's not a Nissan? It doesn't it's make gross. any sense. Gross. Doesn't make any sense because you're the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further. Have you ever wondered what adventure could be around the next corner? Well, our friends at Nissan, they have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. Take the 2024 Nissan Rogue. It's perfect for city drives and great escapes. Charlie Five, one word that comes to your mind when I say 2024 Nissan Rogue. Just real quick. Adventure. There you go. All right. And then the 2024 Nissan Armada. It will change what you expect Elite. from a full-size SUV. What's your word for that? Elite. Elite. Yep, that works. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Today's show also brought to you by our friends at Alumni Hall, Charlie Five. Can you imagine wearing any piece of Auburn gear that you did not get from Alumni Hall? Why would you do that? Why would you even dream of that? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. No. Go and like, look, if you're like, okay, yes, they've got three great physical locations in Auburn, Opelika, and Huntsville. I get that. I don't live near there. That's not an excuse. No, it's no 2024. Excuse. The internet is a thing. You can go to alumnihall.com. They have everything you could possibly want. Load that there. car up. Load it up. 
And maybe they'll get new stuff too if all of this, uh, you know, new uh, new clothing sponsor. Um, that'd be awesome. Yeah. We get a little switcheroo skins that might be coming soon. So we'll see what happens there. But yeah, be sure to check it out. Alumni Hall when you get all of your new Auburn stuff with new logos coming in the near future, hopefully. So uh, once again, that is at uh, alumnihall.com or their three great physical locations in Auburn, Opelika and Huntsville. All right, Charlie Five, can Auburn basketball win the SEC tournament? They are playing really good basketball. I mean, really since that loss to Kentucky, they've been one of the best offensive scoring teams and all of college basketball, and their defense is solid, right? I mean, they've the, the depth, sure. they're able to just wear folks down. And so, to me, I mean, I, I think what we saw against Georgia this past weekend, it's like, okay, Jani Broom had an okay game. It's like 4 of 10. Uh, Chad baker Mazzara had an okay day, but you had Denver Jones, Denver. who like couldn't miss even if he wanted to right now. And so, that win gives Auburn the four seed, and they will play the winner of either South Carolina and then, you know, Vandy or Arkansas, but probably South Carolina. I'd be shocked if it wasn't South Carolina at this point. How do you feel about that matchup for Auburn in the SEC tournament? Uh, I couldn't, I don't think I could have scripted a better draw uh, for Auburn here uh, and, and an ending to the season in general. Um, you go into, you know, you want to see shooting peak at now. Okay. Now for peak. Then, right. I've all I've always said I've always felt like Denver Jones is the key that if you unlock him, you can be very very dangerous when it's tournament time. And you go into the SEC tournament with him, his hitting his career high in three, seven of nine from the line. You draw Ooh. South Carolina, which I love this stat. Uh, I don't I don't know how they come up with it, but they're like last in the universe, or I'm sorry, they are like first in the whole universe, in the in the stat called luck uh, from Ken Palm, which is – I think they're fourth in the country legitimately. In other words, they continuously play above what they are projected to play. In other words, things just go – what they, they, they're playing above their heads, okay? So yeah, I right. love playing the team coming into the tournament that you feel like they're, 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 they've won games that they shouldn't win – and Auburn's going the opposite way. They're winning games that they should win by the point amounts they should be winning them by. Uh, I love it. I didn't want to play Florida. I think that's a bad mismatch inside. And Agreed. then Kentucky, great guards. Uh, their guards are unreal. Uh, there, there's a projection now. Re, uh, Shepard's looking like he could possibly be the number one pick in the draft. Like Insane. Yeah. Insane guards. And then so you draw the South Carolina – Arkansas. I wouldn't be surprised if Arkansas knocks off South Carolina. But anyway, you draw that one, and then your next matchup is Tennessee, who you went toe to toe with at, you know, at Rocky Top, like there. You went in Knoxville. Uh, you mm -hmm. went toe to toe with them. Had to have a dude score forty uh, to beat you, and you were going shot for shot with them, even when he was unconscious. Yeah, they shot over fifty percent from three. They're not doing that again. No, no way. Especially in a neutral site. Auburn shoots incredible at neutral. So hell, they'll shoot, they're shooting great everywhere right now. But it's our bet, some of our best shooting nights were in neutral site games. So I love this team as a tournament team. You're talking six overall in net, number five or six in Ken Palm. Like you're efficient on both sides of the ball, offense yeah. and defense. And you were leading. Hey, did you know that we we finished? Number two, I think, in three point percentage in the uh, in the SEC for the whole SEC season. Would, yeah, I, would I think, think we're that. first since the Kentucky loss. Like, if you take no, oh, I mean, who yeah. cares what we did, you know, in January, right? right. Like that doesn't matter. That doesn't right. matter at all. But like what we've done in the last month, yeah, yeah nobody's going to shoot better than us in the conference right now. Yeah, forty five percent from three over the last five uh, five games since Kentucky, and then fifty two percent from the field. You're mm. peaking at the right time, and there's only a handful of teams I feel like uh, under Bruce Pearl where we, you felt like this going into a tournament. We weren't limping, you know, limping into the end of the year. We are peaking right at the right time. And if you can get a little bit of little bit of extra from your point guards, you're going to be hard to beat. You're going to be really hard to beat. Yeah, I mean, obviously the 2019 Final Four run, we realized how hot Auburn was. I don't think we realized the Final Four was like – realistically on the table when that right. happened, but we felt good about the team going into uh, going into postseason play. Then we felt good about it the following year 
but COVID happened and that was canceled. That team was peaking. Yeah. Yeah. They were peaking. Like you finally had, you know, your lottery pick rolling with, with Isaac and all that. You felt good. You felt good about it. But then ever since then, we haven't really seen that. In fact, yeah. we haven't won a tournament game, an SEC Even tournament there. game since that happened. And no, we won a we won a regular season conference title, but we limped to the finish line. You know, we, right. we barely hung on and won that conference title. And then you lose your first SEC tournament game, and then you get beat in the second round when you had two, you know, two lottery picks or not a lottery, one lottery two pick, first and rounders. The first, yeah. first two first rounders. So, so yeah, this it's a different feeling. I just love man. I lo I love everything about this team's makeup. The how hard they play. How how aggressive they are on defense, uh, mm -hmm. and everybody can contribute. Everybody can contribute, and I, and, and I love it. Yeah. All right, let's go through the SEC tournament bracket. Let's fill out our picks, yep. and will Auburn be the team that we think wins the whole thing? We discuss in just a moment, right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Charlie Five, can you imagine betting on postseason basketball anywhere else? I, I won't you do can. it. I will you not can. do it. Refuse to do it. Head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on right now. New customers. Uh, they get $200 in bonus bets. If your first $5 bet wins, that's $200 to use on point spreads, wow. money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. It's brackets. Uh, yeah. Selection Sunday is close. Brackets for the big dance are pretty much here. So you want to go ahead and make sure you have everything squared away on your FanDuel account so you can you can dive right into the action, I guess, Sunday evening when all that happens. So that will be very, very exciting. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and uh, yeah, bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. All right, Charlie Five, let's kind of go through this tournament um, over the last few minutes of today's show. And let's just start with the second round or really let's go to the quarterfinals. Do you see a world where the, the top four teams don't advance, which, which top four team, which would be Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, and Auburn, which one do you feel least confident in them advancing to the semifinals? Well, Alabama won. I just don't think they can beat Florida. I don't think that's a matchup that they can, I, mm -hmm. the, 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 the big, the big guys inside, they don't – Alabama does not play good defense. They're not physical. That would be one – that would probably be the only one of the four seeds uh, that I feel like could be a uh, – could be an upset. Okay. And you feel good about the other three advancing? Any Tennessee, if, if Mississippi State can match Tennessee physically, I don't know if they can match them offensively, though. They, mm -hmm. So they can match the physicality. So then it just depends on is Tennessee hitting shots or not. Uh, but that's that's the only other one where the physicality matches up. But I just don't know that offensively Mississippi State can hang. Texas A and M, I think, is a similar situation where physically against Kentucky, could they do something? Um, but offensively, Kentucky could just score. Man, they can score, they're, score, and score. They're so. doing Kentucky's doing what Kentucky does right now, and that's their five stars figure out how to play with each other by the end yep. of the year, and they're poised. To make a run, they are just—they just are. They're a great. They're just a, a great team from top to bottom. Their guards are outrageous. Yep, yep. Uh, I, I'm with you there. So, I think Auburn beats Tennessee. I, I think too. Auburn beats South Carolina, and I think Auburn beats Tennessee. I have pivoted on this a little bit since everything was said over the weekend with the SEC regular season wrapping up. I, I think Auburn beats Tennessee. I'm with you. I'm with you. I don't. I, yeah. And I don't feel like that's. I don't feel like that's that outrageous. I mean, Auburn had an opportunity to win a game in Knoxville um, in, a, in a hostile environment with a dude just absolutely going off, and there's no way, there's no way he shoots like that again, especially uh, even if it's in, you know, Nashville or whatever, even if it's in a, uh environment that's sort of more friendly for uh, Tennessee, it's not going to be a true – it's not going to be a true road game. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. going to be a true home game for them. So – uh, I just I like the matchup. I like the matchup. They don't so, they don't scare me physically. It's like one guy, really. It's just one guy, and uh, and you got to think they prep for that game differently this time around. Totally, you got to totally. think. Or honestly, you could probably have the same game plan and just trust that he's not going to be able to do that again. Like I also yeah. think that that's an okay way to approach it. Totally. So totally. so what's more what's more interesting and entertaining and exciting? 
let's assume Auburn beats South Carolina and Tennessee and they're in the championship. Yeah. Them playing Kentucky or them playing Alabama in the SEC tournament championship, which is more exciting. Well, I mean, obviously, you feel better <laughs> about the Alabama matchup. Sure. Uh, and then yeah. the, the right. implications of that game. Uh, but you, I mean, you don't want to lose to Alabama in the SEC championship uh, yeah. match. But I just don't see how they can beat us. I, I mean, it'll be like Ryan Brown had to say on the next round, they'll have to hit 18 threes to beat us uh, because they, they, they won't lose to anybody if they hit 18 threes except for the one team they already lost to when they hit 19. Uh, but, but yeah, that, they can do that, though. They can do that. So, like, that's not like it's something that can't happen. But – Physically, they don't match up. They don't play. We'll just be able to pound them inside, and there's nothing they can do about it. So, can you stay in front of? Uh, can you stay in front of Sears, and then you know, just hope they don't hit all their shots? Basically, I mean that because you're going to be able to score on them. Yeah, yeah. Which player needs to step up the most for Auburn to win the SEC tournament? I'll. Uh, I mean, it's Denver I, Jones, in my opinion. Um, no. Well, to me, Denver Jones is there. I think you got to have a little bit more from your point guards. I think you got to okay. be able to. I think you got to be able to. Um, you got to be able to protect the ball. You got to be able to distribute. And you know what, Aiden, we needed you, need you to hit some shots. Trey, you got to hit some shots. You got to create. We got I, I, the only thing this offense I feel like is missing is that point guard who can drive, get fouled, finish occasionally, but get to the line, man. You know, we don't shoot any – That the, our point guards get no free throws. They shoot no free throws yeah. because they can't – they have trouble penetrating. So, love Which to is see. wild that Trey Donaldson can't do. I mean, look at his build. How can he not He's, attack the rim whenever he wants to? And and he he did. What was funny is on a point – we were running a fast break and he got there and then he, he passed it off the last game. But, but yeah, oh, I would yeah. love to see point guards get a little bit more aggressive, a little Good bit more – Driving, I want to see the point guards, both of them, step up. That's how. That's the key to me to going even further uh, in postseason than than what we could do if they were just played average. Right, right. Charlie Five, how can people check out everything that you've got going on right now? Absolutely, find me on Twitter, the underscore Charlie underscore Five. Uh, you can find me on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the Top Button Podcast, or in the Locked On Auburn Discord every day. Didn't cough one time. Did not cough one time. You're back. Jinx it. I'm back. You're back. I'm Don't back. call it a comeback, but he's back, baby. I'm back, Let's baby. go. Let's go. Hey, Mute please like this video. 100. <laughs> please like this video. Please subscribe. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow to talk Auburn spring football. It'll be back. So until then, like the video, subscribe. This has been Locked on Auburn.